it's your first time landing on one of my videos, welcome, my name is Stasia, and my channel is all about health and weight loss content following a whole food plant-based diet. So today's video is going to be kind of a mix of a little bit of everything. I have some updates regarding my health, I have an announcement to make, as well as sharing some really delicious, easy, helpful recipes. Okay, so with that being said, let's just get into this. So let me see, where do I want to start? Um, okay, let's start with the exciting part. So the announcement that I would like to make is that I finally have my second recipe ebook ready for purchase. Seriously, I know this is going to be really weird to say, but I'm actually excited to have this book <laughs> because it is a recipe ebook compiled of 30 oil-free dressings and sauces. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later, but if you're anything like me, sauces and dressings are everything in this way of eating, like everything. So I'm actually just happy to kind of have all these dressings and sauces in one place that I can reference as well. <laughs> It has taken me a little longer than I like to admit to put this book together, but it is done and I am so happy that I'm finally able to share it with you guys. So if you are in need of some delicious oil-free sauces and dressings to take your meals to another level on this health and weight loss journey, then definitely grab a copy of my new ebook. I'm pretty sure you're going to love it. The link will be in my description box below, so enjoy. Okay, so as far as my health update goes, uh, for those of you guys following me, you might remember a couple of months ago, I had put out my first video that I had come back from taking a break from YouTube. And I had mentioned that I was actually referred out to a cardiologist because they had actually kind of by accident, by fluke, found some kind of abnormality on my EKG reading. And I was completely shocked and very worried. A lot of you guys left a lot of nice uh, messages in my comment box. Um, and I had promised that I would update you guys down the road once I had the results and knew what was going on. The weird thing is, is that um, that day that I had went to the doctors, the doctor had actually told me that he was so impressed with my cholesterol levels. Like he literally was just like, this is like, these are stellar numbers, numbers that he doesn't see that often. So of course I was very happy to hear that, but it puzzled me a little bit about why I would be having anything kind of wrong with my heart, right? So, and actually the doctor was a little bit puzzled himself, but he said he wasn't overly concerned just because of how good my cholesterol levels were. But at any rate, they did have to send me out to a cardiologist just to rule anything out. So I have seen a cardiologist since. I was put through a stress test for those of you who don't know what that is. That means that they basically hook you up to a bunch of, you know, uh, I forget what they're called electro something anyways a bunch of stickies all over your body that are going to monitor your heart and they get you on a treadmill and they either make you walk fast or run or jog or whatever the case so i did my stress test and i passed it with flying colors however they did see a little dip on my reading but he said that because the dip was consistent no matter how fast or slow i was going he said that that was basically normal for me. So abnormal kind of in the bigger scheme of things like compared to other people, but completely normal for me. So, you know, it was kind of one of those things like, I guess it's, I guess that was okay. Um, I still had a little bit of concerns, but well, why is my heart ticking this way <laughs> if nobody else's is, but he assured me not to worry about it. However, he did say, the cardiologist said that he did want me to make an appointment to have, um, to wear a Holter monitor for 24 hours, as well as have um, an echocardiogram, which is just basically an ultrasound of the heart, um, and as well as having another EKG done. So since that appointment, I have had all of those things done and I've also had the results. So I've recently spoken with the cardiologist and he said that what was happening with me is that in a 24 hour period, he did pick up two extra heartbeats that shouldn't have been there. He said that it's not overly concerning um, if it was any more heartbeats uh, within that 24 hour period that he would be discussing with me about putting me on some kind of heart medication. Um, but he said because it was only the two and then there was a big palpitation or something that had happened that was attached to one of those beats. So he said that that would make sense. So basically he just explained that, um, well, first of all, I should say my biggest, you know, most daunting question that I had was, do I need to be worried about a heart attack? Like, are any of these episodes going to cause, you know, something life-threatening to me? And he basically said no. 
So he said that is two completely different systems, which now this makes sense regarding the cholesterol. Um, he said that one is an electrical system that it's working on and the other is the plumbing, which is the arteries. So on the plumbing side, everything's good as I would expect to be being on a plant-based diet, um, but it's just the electrical side. So that really has nothing to do with anything concerning my diet or or lifestyle or anything. So I, I'm assuming he didn't say, but I'm assuming it's something I was possibly born with. So basically he said that, um, that, you know, he just kind of explained what I would do in a situation that if it was a really bad episode to lay flat on my back, to breathe in and push out like I'm having a bowel movement and then it kind of interrupts the the rhythm of the heart and kind of kicks it back into gear. So he said what I'm feeling um, when I'm feeling these kind of fluttering heart palpitations. He said that the heart has a lot of backup systems that normally stay dormant because your heart's just functioning normal. But in my case, when these little hiccups happen, that these backup system, these backup systems are kicking in and that's what I'm feeling. So it's kind of trying to, you know, get the heart back into a regular rhythm. Um, and he said that there is medication for it if it were to ever be out of control. If I had an extended one happening, which I've had happen once, and it lasted for about 10 or 12 seconds. And at that point, I didn't know what was going on. Thought I was having a heart attack. I was taking my breath away. Um, he said that that basically I, I probably had about 22 extra heartbeats in a very short period of time. So he said if that ever happens to get to the ER and they have medication that can kick this heart, like kick the heart back into a normal rhythm. Um, so he just said that at this point, because it only happened so little that uh, he was, he's not interested in starting on the medication because he said the medication has some pretty nasty side effects that can, you know, have you feeling like very dopey and tired and stuff. So he said it's just not worth it at this point. So... I wanted to share all of that with you, A, because I told you guys that I would give you an update. A lot of you guys were asking for one and uh, concerned and wanted to know. And B, I also wanted to share that because I actually had a lot of you comment saying that you also were dealing with some heart issues and waiting to see the doctor and that kind of thing. So I really love using this platform to share information that can be helpful for anyone. Um, just because sometimes that's, you know, that's what we have even more than sometimes going to the doctor. Sometimes we're still left with no answers. So maybe this can help someone out there just to maybe ask your doctor if this could be something happening to you if you're feeling something similar to what I was going through. So I hope this update helps. I must say I was so relieved. Like I wanted to celebrate just the fact that, you know, on one hand, obviously it's not that great that there is anything at all wrong. And believe me, it's it's the heart, so it's still disturbing when it's happening. But just to know that I don't have to be totally freaked out or in panic mode that I'm experiencing a heart attack or something like that. He said my risk factors are very, very low for a heart attack, so that just brings me such a peace of mind you cannot even imagine. <laughs> so that's my update and my announcement. So on to kind of the real part of this video now. So today I'm going to be showing you guys three of my oil-free dressings and sauces straight out of my new ebook to give you guys a little taste of what to expect in that book. As I always stress, we have to enjoy our food. And for those of you following this lifestyle, you know just how important it is to have a delicious dressing or sauce to bring that flavor level up to a 10. Because when we remove the fat, the oils, which can bring a lot of flavor to food, you can be left with pretty fairly bland tasting food. And I personally find that that's one of the biggest complaints to someone new coming over to this lifestyle and their, you know, their palate hasn't changed over yet. So it is really important to make sure that you're finding a delicious dressing or sauce to put over your rice, your potatoes, your beans, whatever your starch is. It really makes such a difference. Now, before we jump into the recipes, I just wanted to touch on a common concern within the community when it comes to oil-free dressings and sauces. So for some of you out there, you eat absolutely no nuts, and I know that. So if you are one of those people that nuts are not your thing, it's totally fine. So a really, really awesome replacement for nuts is using white beans, cooked white beans. Um, I like to use northern white beans, but honestly, almost any bean will do the trick. Now keep in mind, it's not going to taste exactly the same, but it is a pretty wicked substitute. It does really do the trick. So if you're not using nuts 
and you want to try out a recipe, then just swap out the nuts for the equivalent amount of beans and maybe just an extra little bit of liquid to whatever consistency you'd like, just because beans can thicken up quite a bit. Oh, and I was just thinking, so another healthy swap that you can do if you don't eat beans or you don't like beans is try oatmeal. Oat also is really nice for thickening uh, dressings and sauces, and it also has a very mild, bland taste to it as well. So if you're not eating nuts, you don't wanna do the beans, then give oatmeal a try as well, and I'm sure you're going to be satisfied. Okay, and the other thing I wanted to mention about the sauces and dressings is that if you are eating nuts, but you know, you are worried about keeping that calorie density low because that's what the point of this whole lifestyle is, you either have to eat a lot less of it. The other thing you can do is you can dilute those dressings or sauces. So you just add a little bit of water and you're going to thin it out. So therefore, you know, the amount that you're actually going to be using on your food is going to be very, very low in calorie density because you've reduced that calorie density, the overall calorie density of that dressing or recipe, whatever it is, by adding the water. So that's another little tip that you can use if you do enjoy those nut dressings and dips and that kind of thing, but want to keep the calorie density low. Now, for those of you who end up grabbing a copy of the ebook, you're going to see that I had a couple of those extra tips already in the book. But for those of you who do not grab a copy, then I wanted to share with you as well. So with that being said, I'm going to hop in the kitchen now and show you three of those oil free recipes. So I hope you guys enjoy them. And thank you in advance to all of you who grab a copy of my ebook. I really, really hope you like it. All right. So let's get in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. 